Hello, I'm Rico, and this is 123Tube, and we're going to do a one-stop shop for a £550 budget gaming PC. Now, this is not the be-all and end-all. This is just what I've chosen today, sat down in front of the computer. So if you've got any better ideas, better motherboard to use, better processor, whatever, just let me know in the comments. Okay, so we're going to start off with the case. And the case is somewhere we're going to have to cut some corners because we need to save some money so that we get better components later on. So I've chosen this CIT F3 Micro ATX gaming case. Comes with two fans installed, which is a bonus really because it means we don't have to spend money on fans. They are unfortunately four pin Molex fans, but you know, it is what it is. You've got one at the back, one at the front, pushing air through the case, keeping it cool. And it does have decent airflow in this case. There are other cases that I've looked at and they're just terrible for airflow. So I've settled for this one and this one comes in at £30.88 and it has decent ratings. So moving on to the power supply. Well, it, it, some people get cheap power supplies. They cut corners here and I just can't bring myself to do it. Um, this is about as cheap as I'm willing to go for a power supply. It's the Corsair VS550 and uh, it comes in at just over £40 and my recommendation is just do not skimp on a power supply. It's as simple as that. So this is my choice. Um, it's up to the job and it's good enough for future upgrades. So. Right, this is where things get a bit more difficult and interesting. This is the motherboard. So we're going AMD. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, we've got an upgrade path. Uh, the processors are cheap. There's lots of threads. So with that in mind, I've gone for the Gigabyte B450M DS 3H motherboard. And um, it, it just gets the job done. It gets good reviews. It's got a little uh, heat sink on the VRMs. Uh, you can you can put an eight core processor in it, one of the, the three thousand series chips, and I probably wouldn't overclock it, but it will run eight core sixteen threads uh, happily with good airflow. So I've chosen this board. Comes in at sixty two pounds forty one pence at the moment, and um, yeah, like I said, does the job. The the I O on this is decent, as you can see. You know, plenty of USBs. Um, it's got the basics of what you need uh, for a system. So that is the motherboard that I've chosen. So the processor, well, this was difficult because we are on a budget and we've got six cores, 12 threads with this processor. This is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF version. So this is the one that is effectively a Ryzen 5 2600. It's, I believe, on the 12 nanometer process instead of the 14 nanometer, which the original 1600 was on. Um, so this is just an absolute bargain. Um, I, I would highly recommend this for anyone that's on a budget. It's, it's well, just short of 93 pounds. Uh, it comes with a uh, cooler as well in the box, which will do the job. Uh, we've got 3.6 gigahertz and it's it's just an absolute beast for the money. Six cores, 12 threads. So this will just keep up with 1080p gaming, no problem at all. So this is the processor that I've chosen. It's an absolute beast for the money. And yeah, I think, um, I think this is a good choice. So now we go on to memory. Memory is interesting. I've had issues with memory in the past. Um, so now, whenever I choose my memory, I tend to go for this Corsair Vengeance if I'm playing it safe. Um, I always have a look on the motherboard uh, manufacturer site, have a look at the validation for memory, and you'll always see a huge list for Corsair. And that's because it is pretty much the most popular memory out there. Um, so I've chosen this. This is 3200 megahertz uh, RAM, DDR4 obviously, uh, CL16. In my experience, the Corsair memory isn't great for overclocking, but it just does the job. You plug it in, um, you set up XMP in the BIOS, and away you go. So 
I'm choosing this as a safe option and it's a great price as well at just short of £72. Okay, so what, what do we have next? Well, we have a solid state drive. So all we can really afford is a 480 gigabyte SSD. Um, it would be nice to get an NVMe, but I probably wouldn't go for one of those unless I was going for over a thousand pound PC because you pay a, a fair bit extra for NVMe over SSD. But in the real world, you're not going to notice the difference. In benchmarks, absolutely, you will see a difference. But in the real world, uh, for everyday usage, SSD still still does the job. It's it's fantastic. So we've gone for an SSD, the Kingston A400 at £54. And finally, last but not least, we go for the graphics card. Now, this is where I've been trying to save money for our £550 budget. And by cutting a few corners, we are able to go for the 1660 Super. So this is nearly as fast as the 1660 Ti and it's 200 pounds it's an absolute beast um, we've gone for the single fan version i've used the 1650 version of this and it's quiet it, it doesn't run hot at all um, it's perfectly adequate for the system it's fast and it's 1080p gaming no problem at all we'll do 1440p at a push and um, that pretty much ties up our whole system it's pointless building a system and then having really nice case and so forth and then just skimping on the graphics cards. So, uh, yeah, I really think that this is probably the best bang for buck at the moment for a budget system. So there we go. That is my system. That is the, where are we now? May 2020. That is my budget £550 gaming PC. Um, if you have any ideas, like I said, just let me know in the comments if there's anything that you think could be improved upon. I'm all ears. Um, there's no right way of doing this. There's only wrong ways of doing stuff. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching.